So now we're going to get into some control and restraint tactics. We've already gone over uh, basic, your basic strategy and how to do basic escapes and kind of an overview of the whole problem. So now we're going to get into what happens if the attack continues, if I cannot escape and I actually have to deal with this person. So we'll again start with a basic Aikido technique and we'll modify it for this particular circumstance. Okay, so let's talk about what kinds of techniques we want to use. So primarily Aikido techniques deal with wrist locks, okay? In this particular instance, that's not the best thing to do, right? So he grabs two hands. Many Aikido techniques I would come in and try and peel his hands. Well, if he's trying to shove my hand into his face while I'm trying to get his hand loose to perform, an Aikido wrist lock, he's already dug a huge chunk out of my, out of my hand. So I don't want that to happen. So I have to, do, I have to choose techniques that allow me to control the head. That's where the weapon is, right? You want to deal with the weapon that's being used, whether it's a gun or a knife or his fist, in this case his teeth. So I have to deal with the teeth first before I can move on. So that's why we're using techniques uh, where I'm going to be able to separate his hands or my hands from his body as opposed to having everything in here locked up unless I already get caught. Okay, so an appropriate technique to use in this circumstance would be Arimanage. Okay, we're going to use a modified version called Aguski. So Kevin is going to attack me. We'll just start with, uh, actually stand here. He's going to start with same side wrist grab. He's going to grab just one hand. We'll start here as basic technique. I step to the side, leading his balance out and giving myself room to step through. I put my hand here to check his upper body. I'm not hitting him in his throat. I'm just kind of checking the, the upper chest right here. I'm gonna step behind, check that leg, and drive him forward. I step this way, check the upper body, check the leg, take him down. So now we're gonna modify that basic technique for this particular circumstance where he's trying to bite me. So he's gonna be standing here. He will grab me with both hands make it even harder, and he's trying to come in and he's trying to bite. First thing I do is I get in there and I drive his face away, checking the upper chest as we did with the basic movement. Now that front foot is forward. I'm gonna, as I pull this back and push this forward, I step behind and drive him down. He's got both hands on, he's trying to pull in. I stop him right there, hand driving into the chest, chin, throat, so he can't get his teeth on me. Step behind, drive him down. <clears throat> Okay, we got him down on the ground, but more than likely, he's not going to let go once he falls. Once he gets locked into that bite, he wants to get a hold of me and he wants to take a chunk out of me. He's not going to let go until I make him. All right, so here's what's going to happen. So he's going to grab both hands, come in here, check that, step behind, go down. He's still got a hold of me. He's still biting me. Now, my hand's in a bad position. Maybe I can, maybe I can't get over, but what is a good position is my knee, okay? Yeah. So I drive the knee down, forcing it away from me. Okay, once I've got that knee down, I can apply pressure if I want to. <clears throat> but from here, with my knee down, it's much easier for me to get my hands free. So one more time. I've got this. Takes it down, immediately bring that knee in. Then you can pry your hands loose. Then we'll go into the pen. Okay, we've taken him down. We've applied pressure with the knee. We've gained pretty much control of the situation, but I don't want to stay in this position. He has a whole, he's got a lot of movement available to him. His feet can come in, he can grab me again, he still can bite. I really want to roll him over and use a, a, a basic Aikido pin to keep his weapons away. So it's going to be determined on how he responds. So if I'm just sitting here and he's neutral and he's not moving and there's no danger, I can sit here all day. It's when he tries to get up that it's going to give me an opportunity to pin him the way that I want. So he can't sit up because my knee is on his face. So he's going to either do two things. He's going to try and turn towards me and fight, or he's going to try and turn away from me and escape. Okay? I, I need to be ready for each one. So in each case, all I'm going to do is whichever direction he's turning, I'm going to take the top hand as he goes. So if he turns towards me, I take that top hand and roll him over because that's the way he was already going. On the opposite side, he starts to roll the other way. This is now the top hand. So then I come around and I pin this way. Okay, so one more time. We're down. I've got his head away. I've got my hand free. I'm looking to pin. 
So it's all going to be determined on what he does. So he's going to do one of two things. He's going to, right? Because that way, that's fine. I go with him. <clears throat> or the other one, he comes towards me. I go with him and pin that way. Okay, so we're going to get into another type of attack. Uh, I'm going to use my trusty blue glove. This is just a PVC heavy-duty chemical resistant glove. Uh, I don't know what Kevin has in his mouth. I know I don't want it in my hand. But this is a good training tool. It, it really does not protect me from the sensation of, of being bit, so it's very realistic. It just kind of protects uh, my hand and his mouth uh, from injury resulting in him biting me. So uh, in this case, he's going to bite again with both hands. But the last time he did this, he was, he was in front of me with, uh, facing me. This time he has turned in towards me, and he's biting me this way. So I can't push away like I did before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into some of the pressure point attacks that we utilized, uh, that we demonstrated in the previous video. So the first one, I'm going to attack the uh, tear duct. I'm going to come in just in the eye socket and put my finger right there and just peel his head back. Okay, once I do that, I'm just going to step back and take him down. If he continues the attack, we went over how to make him release by smothering him previously. Okay, so different. So he's in here and he's got me like this. This isn't working for me for whatever reason. Then I come under to the eye socket pressure point. Peel his head back like you're opening a pop-top can. Again, as I come back, step back, take him down. We already went over how to use the knee, uh, how to smother, again, those things. So the third one is he comes in here, and I can't get around, and I can't get in like this. So let's turn this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hand like a little hook, and I'm going to go behind the ear. And I'm going to push that away and throw him down. Okay, so those three basic pressure point attacks that we went over before, if they peel in and they curl their back to you and they try and isolate your hand, you're going to have to attack that head release that bite, and then go from there. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you. Please subscribe to IQ Fit Life and tell all of your friends to subscribe. Have a nice day.